problem uh, the cabinet last Thursday and the uh, meeting had to be aborted until uh, this Thursday coming. I believe we are live now, Chair, just waiting on confirmation. Okay, fine. Thank you. Right, I've had confirmation now that this uh, meeting is uh, back being recorded. So um, I'd like to welcome everybody back to the meeting following our adjournment. And we move straight in then to um, item seven on the agenda. Uh, farmstead southeast of uh, Beige Court, Dawston, the erection of a cattle shed, one bay extension to an existing general purpose agricultural storage building and landscaping. Um, the planning officer uh, dealing with this application is Mr. Ollie Jones, who will make the presentation shortly. Uh, Ward Councillor, uh, Councillor Hewitt, who is present and will open and close the debate. Uh, but as she is not a member of this committee, will not get a vote on the, the application. And uh, we have two speakers registered. Firstly, Mr. Paul Kemble, on behalf of Golden Valley Action Group, um, he will be speaking in objection to the application, and uh, that will be via an audio submission. And second, Mr. Pick, who is the applicant's agent, uh, he has made a written statement uh, that I will ask uh, Mrs. Evans to uh, read out to uh, members. So... Uh, before we go to the public speakers, um, I call upon uh, Mr. Jones to uh, make the presentation, please. Thank you, Chairman, and um, a very good afternoon to members. Um, just before I launch into, into my presentation, I would just draw members' attention to the update sheet. Um, since the committee report and agenda were published, two additional representations have been received. Um, these are made as further comments and bring to light no new planning matters which have not already been considered. Similarly, members will have been in receipt of further correspondence from the Golden Valley Action Group, which officers have had sight of. Um, the points raised are summarised in the update sheet. Um, the response to these points and queries is addressed accordingly in the officers' comments section, and this also includes a submission of additional information from the applicant pertaining to the justification of additional buildings at the site. Um, there's also a small correction um, to the officer report noted as well. Um, finally, I would also add that given the current restrictions and the fact that a committee site visit hasn't been possible, the presentation contains some short video clips taken from and around the site. Um, and obviously, hopefully this will go some way in visualising the context of the site and its surroundings. Um, so if we could have the first slide, please. Thank you. So hopefully everyone can see that now. So. Um, the application, as the chairman's pointed out, seeks planning permission for the erection of one new livestock building together with a one bay extension to an existing general purpose agricultural storage building at land to the southeast of the beige um, situated within the rural parish of Dorstone. The site lies approximately 14 miles to the west of Hereford City and is situated within the Golden Valley, approximately 1.5 miles to the north of Dorstone. Um, the location of the site can be identified by the red star on the slide. Okay, if you could have the next slide, please. Uh, members will see on this slide the site location plan, which is edged in red. The main access to the site can be seen, which is taken from the B4348 to the west. Um, access to the site can also be taken from Scar Lane, um, which runs to the east of the site. Um, the hamlet of the beige can be seen um, to, um, to the west, and that's quite well visualised in the um, aerial, aerial map um, at the bottom of the slide. 
Okay, if we go to the next slide, please. Um, this slide shows the proposed oh, sorry, plan. Ollie, can I just interrupt you, Ollie? Um, Chairman, I have a black banner across my screen at the top, which means the part of the screen is uh, is obscured. Is there any way of getting rid of that? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Ollie. Okay, that, no worries. Um, so this slide shows the proposed plans and elevations. Um, the existing building um, would, as you use for agricultural storage, is clearly marked. And as members will see, the existing building would be extended in length by one bay, and this equates to just under 6.1 metres. Um, the new cattle shed would sit alongside the extended storage building, matching its length, albeit with a slightly increased ridge height. Um, and the next slide, please. Um, here, members will see the enlarged built form in context of the site as a whole. So for reference, the proposed enlargement is that shaded in block grey with the hatched area representing that as existing. To provide a sense of scale, the proposed increase in built coverage, the additional built footprint at the site would equate to, an approx to approximately um, an increase of 22%. Um, in addition, landscaping is proposed by way of a 91 metre landscape barrier along the newly formed southeastern boundary of the site. This would replace the existing post and wire fence and would be formed using traditional native species, hedgerow plant and trees. It would lie along the same axis as the existing fence, albeit translocated just over three meters to the southeast. This would allow space for maneuvering and maintenance at the southeastern ends of the buildings. Um, so we'll now move on to some video images of the site. Of, of the site um, and I'll just overlay a brief commentary of what, what we can see um, from those. So if we could have the first, um, the next slide, please. And then if we could play that, if possible. Um, so this shows the access off the B4348 looking southeastwards now towards Doorstone. Um, and then just panning around, you can see um, the access towards the complex. Um, and then looking again in a southeasterly easterly direction through the Golden Valley. So this gives some context of the landscape character, um, especially characterized by open fields, hedgerows and woodlands with the ground rising to the east and west to form those sort of steep sided valley slopes, which um, the Golden Valley is known for. Um, if we could go on to the next one, please. So this here is the existing storage building um, viewed from the northern side of the site. And as previously set out, this would be extended by one bay occupying the area almost in, in shot now, as far as almost that post and wire fence. And then the landscape planting would run, up, run, run along the same axis as the fence, um, although three meters further into the field, which can be seen in the shot now. Uh, if we go into the next one, please. So this this shows the westernmost buildings, um, currently used for the housing of livestock, um, and then again the storage building to be extended in the foreground, which can be seen now. Um, and there to the right of that is where the new livestock building would be sited, um, in alignment with the with the extended storage building. Okay, I'll pick up the next one, please. So here we look within the complex, first um, looking sort of westwards now, and then panning around. And now we're looking into the existing storage building, which would be extended to the southeast. And then here is where the proposed livestock building would sit um, alongside in the foreground. Okay. Um, this one is filmed from Scar Lane to the southeast of the site and taken just from a land adjacent to Scar Cottage. Um, so we're now essentially looking in a northwesterly direction towards the beige, um, which is sort of beyond towards Hay. Um, you can see the site, and as we zoom in, you'll be able to make out the storage building, um, which is the one nearest the camera, um, and um, in in bo the one the boarded one. Um, and then the new livestock building obviously would sit in alignment to the front of that. So um, as, as we zoom out um, and pan across, members will be able to gain a greater visualization of the landscape setting. Looking now looking west with the Black Mountains faintly visible in the distance. And so looking southwest across the Golden Valley um, and Doorstone um, is just out of shot behind. 
those trees. So hopefully that gives a kind of sense of um, where the site is and the sort of landscape setting it's situated within. Um, and then slide nine is just shows some um, additional photographs. Um, top one shows the site looking east. Um, uh, sorry, the, the top one is looking um, northwestwards. Sorry for that. Um, and members were able to make make out the existing boundary, um, so the post and wire fence, um, and the landscape barrier would replace this and be slightly like sited slightly closer to where the photograph has been taken. Um, but as I said, albeit on the same same access axis. Um, the second photo. Oh, sorry. Can we just go back. Yeah, the second photo shows the site from Scar Lane um, to the east of the site. Um, and again, this photo helps to sort of show the character of, and appearance of the landscape. Okay, so if we could move on to slide 10, please. So in assessing the proposal, um, due regard must be had to the development plan. In this location, it comprises the Herefordshire Local Plan, the core strategy, and the adopted Dorset Neighbourhood Development Plan, um, which here will be referred to as the DNDP. The National Planning Policy Framework, the MPPF, is also a material consideration. So policy RA6 of the core strategy echoes the tenets of paragraph 83 and 84 of the MPPF, which lends support to the small scale expansion of existing businesses in rural areas where they're of a scale which would be commensurate with its location and setting and would not cause adverse impacts to the immunity of neighbours. It's important to note that officers fully acknowledge the significant levels of concern pertaining to whether or not there is a need for a further building at the site. As members will see from the, the update sheet as referred to earlier, some additional information has been provided in terms of the scale of the enterprise and the intentions of the applicant going forward. Um, so just to clarify this, the applicant has increased the number of fattening pigs which require housing in um, the existing buildings on the site. Um, the applicant wishes to expand cattle numbers and therefore requires additional buildings um, to do so. The traditional buildings um, which are found at Beige Court um, in, in the hamlet of the beige just to the northwest and no longer within the ownership of the applicant um, and therefore going forward do not provide any solution to this need. Um, in terms of numbers, the total avail land available to the applicant at the present time is 350 acres. The applicant has 1,000 fattening pigs, around 650 breeding ewes and 45 cattle um, and it's obviously um, the latter in which he intends to, to expand. Um, notwithstanding this, the ass an assessment of justification is set out um, at paragraph 6.10 of the officer's report um, and it is considered that there is sufficient justification for the commensurate expansion of the existing agricultural enterprise. Um, it, it's also worth um, pointing out that the land at present is in agricultural use and as such no change of use is proposed. Stocking densities, for example, fall under separate legislative controls and the development relates solely to the extension of an existing building and the creation of a new building. Um, so in landscape terms, policy ENV1 of the DNDP states that development proposals will be supported where they conserve or enhance the character of the conservation area, including amongst other things, its landscape features and views. Policy LD1 of the core strategy requires development proposals to ensure that the landscape setting has positively influenced the design and site selection. Um, so officers acknowledge the concerns with regards to the impact on the wider landscape setting and have had due regard to re recent decisions on the site um, in undertaking an assessment. Whilst the site does not lie within a conservation area or an AONB, the value of the Black Mountains and Golden Valley landscape character is acknowledged. Mm -hmm. The buildings proposed are typically functional in their appearance and would assimilate with the existing buildings at the site. The design is not so utilitarian that it appears as industrial and the proposals would not substantially expand the built coverage of the site. And as I mentioned earlier, um, the increase would be around 22% um, in the built coverage. Um, the additions relate to an existing complex and would be logically and well positioned within the site. Um, as members will see from the proposed site plan um, on the slide now, the development would essentially result in three very, very similar sized um, square blocks of buildings on the site. Um, materials proposed are considered appropriate and broadly match those used on the existing buildings, although details of such would be secured by way of condition, um, which is recommended within the officer's report. Um, whilst the increased ridge height is acknowledged, given its proximal relationship with the existing buildings on the site, officers do not consider that this would lead to harm to the wider landscape setting in its own right. 
noting that further incremental spread of built development in a southeasterly direction would be discouraged. The proposal has been amended to include a landscape barrier in replacement of the existing post and wire fence. The line of the proposed planting, which can be seen on the slide, would serve to provide a natural but definitive boundary to the site, one which does not currently exist. Further, whilst of course the site would still be visible, it would act to soften the appearance of the built form of the proposed and existing buildings at the site. Its insertion would be wholly harmonious with the characterization of the wider landscape setting. Its impl implementation and long-term maintenance would be secured by condition to ensure it remains in perpetuity. With this in mind and subject to the recommended conditions, officer cons officers consider the design, siting and proposed landscape is, is acceptable and would not lead to any undue harm to the wider landscape setting, according with policy SD1, LD1 and ENV1 of the development plan. In terms of amenity, the site is divorced from many residential neighbours. The nearest is within the hamlet of the Beige, just over 350 metres to the west. With, with the use of the site remaining unchanged, it is not considered that the modest increase in built form at the site would lead to a prejudice, prejudicial impact on residential amenity. Officers would here advise members that as the use of the buildings has been questioned, the buildings are considered to be clearly designed and proposed for agricultural use. Um, I would stress here that the MPPF makes it very clear that there may be other consenting regimes which control the use, pollution control or livestock numbers, for example, but this is beyond the scope of development, man development management. Concerns with regards to ecology and bi biodiversity are noted. Policy E1, LD2 and SD4 set out that proposals should not result in any adverse impacts on the River Y special area of conservation. Given that the scale of the Given the scale of the site, the Council's planning ecologist has set out that the proposal does not meet any triggers in which ammonia screening is required or a habitat regulations assessment is requ required. It is considered that the proposal has not raised any objection from, it is confirmed, sorry, that the proposal has not raised any objection from the Council's ecologist. In terms of highways and access, the existing arrangement would remain unaltered with the use of the site remaining as existing. It is not considered that the vehicular uplift which would result from the additional building would lead to severe harm to the highway network. No conflict with policy MT1 of the core strategy and policy E1 of the DNDP is identified in this regard. So in conclusion, the proposal would result in the modest expansion of, exi of an existing small scale rural enterprise. The proposed building and extension would assimilate well with the existing buildings on the site by virtue of their scale and design. The proposed landscape barrier would replace the existing post and wire fence boundary, providing a strong and natural southeastern limit to the complex, softening its overall appearance within the wider landscape. No harm to the immunity of any neighbouring residential um, properties has been identified, nor would the proposal was, would nor is it considered the proposal would result in any severe harm to the local highway network, or cause harm to biodiversity or ecological networks. It is therefore considered a sustainable form of development and is accordingly recommended for approval as set out within the officer's report. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, we have two uh, registered speakers. First is uh, Mr. Paul Kemble on behalf of the Golden Valley Action Group, um, who is speaking uh, in objection. And this is by audio submission, which I, I would ask to be played now, please. from case officers which lacks robust and transparent ladies and gentlemen you have a report and recommendation from case officers which lacks robust and transparent analysis to justify this development it omits argued consideration of almost all matters raised by the golden valley action group and others it is long on words and short on analysis so it is incomplete and unsafe Officers have made zero effort to consult or even respond to specific and valid questions from us over seven months whether face to face or in writing Superficial, incomplete references in a long document posted a few days before this planning committee meeting are not adequate or acceptable. The report accepts without question the agent simply saying that the applicant needs a new building for 80 beef cattle. Absent is any argued case or detail for that, especially as in previous applications the applicant said that farming beef was no longer economic. More important, given the rejections by three planning inspectors for three previous applications for this location, there is no analysis of what the applicant's true intention is.
In our two submissions, we warn that this new application is a Trojan horse. It is designed to achieve by stealth what inspectors rejected over six years as industrial in scale. In the report, our objections are inadequately summarised and buried, largely unaddressed. Why have officers not questioned the following, as we did? Why does the new barn for 80 beef cattle have a roof ridge more than a metre higher than the barns it will connect to? Will these be tall cattle? Why is it necessary to expand the farmstead east beyond established boundaries? Officers dismiss our alerts. They write, this application cannot be assessed with speculative assumptions in mind. Well, two weeks ago, building work started to convert an existing cattle shed to expand the new pig production enterprise, apparently to double its capacity. This was even after a planning officer in 2018 wrote to the applicant that no application will be approved, which creates substantial harm to character and appearance of the area. The three inspectors insisted that the main principle at this location is landscape. Each separately rejected previous plans because of substantial harm to the character and appearance of the area. The final inspector added, no proposal would outweigh the harm to the area I have identified. In today's report, the landscape officer makes clear that no incremental spread is acceptable. Yet we are witnessing incremental spread, even before you, the committee, have considered the issues. What is different now? The site is described as not in a flood zone. As we report and witness during winter, there is significant flooding from slurry and uncovered manure heaps. Our alert has been ignored. The planning inspectors confirmed this is an extremely sensitive location. The council should therefore review all issues using an expert independent agricultural consultant before making a final decision. We urge members to reject or adjourn this planning application. Well, thank you. Uh, we now have a written submission uh, by Mr. Peak, Pick, the applicant's agent. And I will ask Mrs. Evans to uh, read the uh, written submission, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, as, as confirmed, this is from Ian Pick, the planning agent on behalf of the applicant. Chair, members, thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation to the planning committee. This proposal is for a small extension to an existing agricultural storage building and for the erection of a modest cattle shed. The applicant operates a traditional family farming business around the beige Dorston. The farm extends to 350 acres of land and includes arable cropping, beef, sheep and pig rearing enterprises. The application site is a relatively new farmstead and currently comprise, comprises a number of portal frame farm buildings. These proposals include new modest structures with a similar simple design to the existing buildings on the farm. The proposed buildings are adjoining the existing buildings. Much has been made of the site history in objections to this application. The applicant has previously made planning applications to develop a poultry farming enterprise on this farm. Those proposals were refused planning permission on appeal due to the impact on the landscape of the Golden Valley of poultry buildings of large industrial stroke utilitarian design. As a result of those refusals, the applicant has had to abandon his ambitions to engage in poultry farming and has sought to expand and diversify his business through more traditional farming enterprises. To that end, it is now surprising that this application is subject to such opposition and even more surprising that a small scale farm building application of this nature has been referred to the planning committee for determination. The design of the proposed development is simple and reflects the character of locality and the adjoining buildings. This proposal acknowledges the planning inspector's opinions that large and utilitarian poultry buildings are not appropriate in the Golden Valley. The proposed development is not an intensive livestock unit and is clearly designed as a cattle shed with open size and feed barriers. This application is purely and simply to enable a farm business, farm, family farming business to expand their cattle accommodation through the erection of a portal framed farm building. Traditionally, far, family farming businesses are something which should be supported and it is respectfully requested that the clear officer recommendation of approval is followed and planning permission is granted. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs Evans. Uh, we now move across to uh, Ward Councillor, Councillor Hewitt, who is a local ward member for this item. She will speak uh, and open the debate. Um, we will then um, 
have the debate. Um, I will invite Councillor Hewitt to uh, make any final, final comments before we uh, go to the vote. Um, and as um, I've stated before, Councillor Hewitt, um, not being a member of this committee, does not get a vote on this application. So uh, over to you, Councillor Hewitt, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'd like to start really by saying that um, there are two major considerations here. Number one is that um, is that in order to assess, Ollie, um, the officer has has taken photographs of the site, but actually in order to assess how, what the what the impact of um, a, you know an extra fifth of roof space is on the the visual impact in the um, from the tourist viewpoints up on Murbach Hill and from Arthur Stone, I absolutely think that there are enough members in, in the committee who will not have visited the site and will not understand the sensitivity of it. So it has sensitivity from a uh, visual landscape impact, but it also has sensitivity in its um, hidden things. And those are in relation to sitting at the head of the door and, and to water quality. And although I note that it was not um, accepted that it, it, it reached the trigger point for air quality, which is to do with the ammonia outputs, um, I want to question that in my report. So I'll, I'll start. Um, as Ward Councillor, I feel it is my duty to uphold sustainable development. This is mentioned in in the Doorstone Neighbourhood Plan, but it's also got so many mentions in our core strategy in Hereford that I actually think um, that is the centre where this application lies. So, and support the triple pillars of environment, community and economy. So I've got two suggestions. Notwithstanding the photographs, we need to go and visit the site. And so I'd ask for a deferral until such time as we can do that to understand the environmental impact um, to, in order to determine the planning balance and that we need more information. The, this administration has declared a climate and eco ecological emergency and has put prioritization of that at the heart of its decision making. And given that the very policies that will protect the environment are written into our core strategy, I'll endeavor to demonstrate why, in my opinion, this planning application at the base should be considered with extreme caution. It's, as it stands, the high level of caution and respect for our environment in the Golden Valley, was, which was demonstrated by inspectors for a refusal of three previous appeals, wouldn't be served by this application. The officer report cites SS1, and that an SS1, its focus is to improve economic and environmental conditions in Herefordshire. <clears throat> I can see that the, it would improve the economic benefits for the farmer, and I've got no objection to good business practice, but where it risks damaging the air or the soil or watercourses, then this also damages the community because it's upon the integrity of these that we rely as a human community. <clears throat> it suggests that where policies <clears throat> are out of date at the time when the council will grant permission, unless material considerations indicate otherwise, that taking into account whether any adverse impacts would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits as against the policies in national policy taken as a whole. From what I can understand, the benefits are wholly to the applicant, and there seems to be risks of not inconsiderable magnitude that would demonstrably outweigh the benefits, both to the integrity of the water quality and the visual impact on the landscape, and thus to the sustainability of the community. In the officer's report, it says the additional cattle shed has a floor space of 464 metres, and so this application falls under any trigger sizes, which is 500 square meters for air pollution emissions in regards to sites of special scientific interest. <clears throat> so that no detailed 
air emissions assessment is required for this development. But with the additional extension to the neighbouring barn, the floor area of the proposal, and that is the floor area of this application in total, is 504.2992 metres. So I would contend that the combined floor space, given that these barns are going to be contiguous with each other, should actually be taken as one unit. I've been advised that each proposal has to be taken as standalone and not looking at the whole picture. The wider and cumulative activity on the farm would not be considered a material consideration under planning law unless this SSI, uh, this um, was a trigger to actually investigate the air quality was triggered. So, um, so the sites and let an air quality investigation was triggered. Um, but um, I'd like to propose that given the sensitivity of the site suggests sitting as it does in the valley, valley bottom of the river door um, and at the source of the river door, it would have been wise to present the whole picture. The need for the new barn for housing, winter housing of cattle appears to have arisen because of the applicant's desire to expand his pig production numbers. Would it not therefore have been wise or trans wise to be transparent and include a slurry management program as was submitted with the previous chicken shed applications? This would have gone a long way to reassuring the local community that the air, the soil and the water in this beautiful Golden Valley matter to the applicant in his role as farmer and steward of the land. He would thus have been able to demonstrate how his plan protects biodiversity and enhances the wider well-being of the Golden Valley. And I note that in one of the pictures that Ollie showed, there was actually an open manure heap sitting in front of the barns. Well, those manure heaps were sitting there in the winter and the code of good agricultural practice is really trying to address this issue and get farmers to understand, you know, the um, ammonia cycle and how that's affecting our rivers. Without appropriate caution and calculation via SCAIL scale or some such um, some such tool, increased livestock numbers in this farm location will have significant effects on any, any relevant SSI. The River Door is home to lamprey and to brown trout, which is a UK biodiversity action plan fish species, and recently cited otters, that was the local mammal group who'd spotted them down in Peter Church. It runs its course to the Mono and thus to the River Wye at Monmouth. The officer report cites SD3, which is sustainable water management and water resources. The development uh, considerably increases the roof surface area. And since there's no calculation of the increased surface area of the roofing and the consequences of runoff, there's no water management program. So, um, you know, we need to see what is going to happen to that water, especially in a farm yard where inevitably there's effluent around and the, the course of the river runs down the side of the farm. We need more calculation, more information and a mitigation plan because development proposals, this is SD3, should help to conserve and enhance water courses and riverside habitats where necessary through management and mitigation measures for the improvement and or enhancement of water quality and habitat of aquatic environment. So because we don't have a calculation of runoff from these roofs, um, we, we, we can't really see what the water management plan is. Um, no accounts made of the special combination of rainwater runoff to surface water, groundwater and increased livestock numbers. Why is this more urgent than ever? This winter brought continued and persistent flooding everywhere in Herefordshire and also in the Golden Valley. And a huge amount of heavy rain eroded the rain, uh, the road surface on the scar and made, made it impassable to traffic. The beige farm, which sits alongside the, uh, 
the Bay Schwamm sits alongside Scar Lane in the valley bottom below the source of the River Door, which rises to the northwest and runs around the perimeter of the farmyard. So, and there were large piles of manure sitting in this valley bottom. On the magic site used by DEFRA and Natural England, the Environment Agency, the Forestry Commission and Marine Management, the area in which the Beige Farms sits is considered a high priority area for catchment sensitive farming. Now we know catchment sensitive farming is a voluntary um, thing that farmers can participate in, but DEFRA themselves have identified the areas in which, you know, there is risk to the actual ground in the area. So it says about this site, it sits in a water quality priority area where country stewardship agreements under rural development programs could improve water quality. The high priority air risks at the site are identified as nitrates, sediment issues, phosphate issues, and flood ma management issues. It, it identifies high groundwater vulnerability, that is the map shows a high level of um, vulnerability to pollutants discharged at ground level. So policy SD4 says development shouldn't, should not undermine the achievement of water quality targets for rivers within the county. Well, so with no roof runoff calculation, especially with the climate change downpours we're getting, and increased animal footprint on the farm, I don't see how we can be safe in our assessment of the water quality targets for the door, the mono and the Y. I mean, the planning history, residents in the Golden Valley don't understand why at the beige planning infringements, e.g. the very visible and industrial looking, I mean, the chicken sheds were rejected because they were industrial looking, feed silos for the intensive pig rearing, which were put up with the planning permission and the way the footprint of the farm has been eroded by successive planning permissions have, have gone unchallenged. I mean, I think that's really upset the community and I think that needs to be understood and addressed by taking a proper look at the sensitivities in this application. I think the visual impact of the roof and the feed silos, which were, I mean, it was just waived the fact that the feed silos were put onto the pig, pig units, which I, I'm not sure it were, they were gonna be pig units originally, but so they, they were just waived. There should have been applications for them. The visual aspect, the um, impact of the roof does lead to an industrial feel. If you view it from the tourist sites at the top, which is Scar Lane, um, not Scarlet, um, Arthur's Stone and um, from Murbach Hill. Um, you know, I'm sure it's possible to farm sustainably and there's lots of financial incentive out there for farmers to do so. And I hope that in planning decisions, we can aid farmers in making choices to endorse good farming practice in every department of our administration. So I'll rest it there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hewitt. Uh, we now go into uh, uh, debate and I'm looking for the first speaker, please. No volunteers yet. Right, Councillor Fagan. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think a 22% increase on this site, to me, that feels like a substantial increase. Um, and and I, I don't think it is an increase that's small scale commensurate with the scale, um, with scale and setting, to be honest. I, I think uh, the serious concerns have been raised about the detrimental effect to the Golden Valley and the Black Mountains as um, landscape value and the issue of water quality. Um, is is something that we really need to consider. Um, I, I feel uh, that we should actually defer this application until we can actually have a look at the at the site properly. I know we have seen um, video footage, and 
I mean, to me, it looks like the site has actually met its uh, capacity for development. But so I would like to actually see the site. So is that a proposal for a deferment? Can I can I keep that? I mean, others others may have something else to say, um, but perhaps I could come back to that if that's all right. That's fine. Uh, move to uh, Councillor Selden, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, Mr. Jones, could you just recap the uh, water quality um, <coughs> of this development, please? Mr. Jones. Yeah. So, I mean, as we obviously consulted with ecology and um, they, they returned no objection. The, the scale, the increase um, footprint of the building um, doesn't meet any thresholds for any, any screening um, in terms of HRA. Um, I would just point that obviously the, the new cattle building um, wouldn't be contiguous with the extension of the um, storage building. They, would, they are two separate buildings. So the building to be extended would remain as storage um, and therefore the cattle building would remain under that 500 um, square meter. Um, the, obviously the housing of livestock would, would be, um, it would be straw um, during the winter. So the cattle would be housed on straw. So it wouldn't be um, sort of slurry um, and sort of wet waste, so to speak. So um, the ecologist hasn't returned any objection to, to that proposal. Right. So, so sorry, sorry, Chairman, just to cut, recap. So there is no cumulative impact assessment of what that site could produce. The, the ecologist hasn't, as I said, the ecologist has, has taken a view that there, there is no objection to the proposal given, given the, the site at present. So, um, you yeah, know, obviously, whilst there is an increased um, of the, the cumulative floor space would increase, um, the ecologist hasn't um, objected in that regard. Okay, thank you. I think that's answered the question, uh, Councillor Seldon's foot. Um, we move across to uh, Councillor Mill. Yes, thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted to ask a question about um, the historic environment. I, 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 I see from the consultees list that the, um, there was no internal reference to for historic environment, and yet the landscape officer has uh, commented on, uh, has, has, um, commented on the um, proposal to introduce a hedgerow as as being um, evidenced by historic mapping. And I didn't see any evidence in the historic mapping. I've just, I was uh, certainly the, the circle 1840, presumably the tithe, tithe map included in the officer's report has no hedgerow on it. Uh, and indeed, ni neither does the subsequent ordnance survey maps on, on this line. But actually, that wasn't so much what I was um, concerned to clarify. Uh, the um, the site, the application site straddles the line of the Golden Valley Railway, which is um, historic <coughs> in the historic environment record um, number 19263. Uh, and there doesn't appear to be any comment on, on this. No weight has been given to this. Could, has the officer any, any comment to make on it? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Mill. Uh, Mr. Jones, please. Yeah, I mean, the Golden Valley Railway um, the obviously historic route of that does pass to the south and um, to the east of the site but that that in itself isn't a designated heritage asset in which we'd um, obviously need to make an assessment um, as to whether or not the proposal would would lead to any harm to that so that in its own right isn't um, it's not an, a her considered a heritage asset um, and um, so yeah we, we haven't engaged in any consultation because of that and there is no sort of um, policy requirement for us to consider the impact on that as it's not a designated heritage asset. Um, may, may I come back on that and just you just uh, if you forgive me um, although the fact all it may not be designated but it is nonetheless still a material consideration in planning by virtue of it being on the historic environment record and the other thing is the application site boundary actually does cut across it so it isn't just simply adjacent to it or close to it the application site boundary the red line cuts across it okay thank you Okay, thank you, Councillor Mill. Uh, move across to uh, Councillor Roan. Yeah, put... uh, I, I, I like to look at things in layman's terms, and, and what I'm looking at here is we've got an application for a farm building of about 470 square metres on a farm in a historically agricultural area 
for the purposes of either expanding or upholding the farming enterprise. Now, the reason that the Golden Valley is as beautiful as it is, is because the land is managed by farmers. And I can see no outcome here other than our support and real support for a farming family. I'll be voting for the application and supporting the recommendation. I, I, I think that, I mean, I always give great, great credence and value to what the local member says. But, you know, the, the, the reason that it's there is because it's a farm. And to do otherwise would be absolutely turning our backs on what is the agricultural community and, and a representation like this. I, 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 I'm going to be supporting it today. Thank you. Uh, is that a proposal, Councillor Rowe? I'm going to listen to what the value... I, I don't need a, a, to do a going recommendation with the um, officer, do we? You need to propose recommendation. Yeah, approval. happy to then. Yeah, happy to then. Right. Um, have I a seconder for that proposal then, please? Yes, I'll second that, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. So we move across to uh, Councillor Watson now, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted some clarification because in the officers, um, in the various officers' reports, there was an issue around roofing, um, whereas she was concerned about uh, what was being proposed. But the, the landowner, uh, the farmer, was quite happy to move on that. Uh, the hedgerow. Um, I know it's a pedantic point, but I've got concerns about um, the sycamore being put in hedging because it's actually poisonous to horses. So for a further use of the field onto the right-hand side of the hedgerow, um, it's just kind of like landscaping. Um, is there something about lighting, about the impact of lighting uh, from the um, cattle shed and or the extension, um, what's the purpose for the height of 7.3 metres? And I think, um, unfortunately, I would have wanted to support the deferral because it's really just getting some clarification on these points and also picking up on what Councillor Milne said about the historic importance of the railway line. Um, but anyway... Okay, thank you. Um, so that was, that was a question with regards to uh, lighting. So if I could... Uh, and, and height, please, Chair. And the height, sorry. Uh, and roofing. Mr Jones. Yeah, so um, with, regards to, with regards to roofing and the materials, um, we, we have conditioned, recommended a condition so that we can secure those details. Um, so obviously to ensure that those details in terms of external materials are acceptable. With regards to the height, um, I'll go back to the point that the application has been assessed on its own merits and we've considered whether or not that increase in height uh, relative to those existing buildings is accept acceptable in landscape terms or not. We've come to the view that given the height and scale of the existing buildings and its proximity to the others, that it, that height increase in its own right wouldn't result in any undue landscape harm. Um, I understand that the rationale for that is to achieve the span of the building um, I don't don't consider that there's any sort of hidden intent for the increased height. Um, it, it is a building that's purpose will, would be purpose for cattle. Um, no lighting is proposed um, to the building. Um, with with regards to the trees, I mean the sycamore has been was recommended, I think, as um, a species to be used, and the landscape officers consider that acceptable in landscape terms. I mean. I note the sort of concerns with regards to um, the poison from that and the impact that could have on, you know, on horses or other livestock. Um, but that isn't something that we can take into consideration um, in planning terms. Hopefully that answers, answers the questions. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Jo uh, Councillor Johnson, please. Oh, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me? We can, yes, thank you. <clears throat> Uh, I have already seconded uh, Councillor Rowan's uh, proposal, but uh, it, it's merely to expand very briefly on that, if I may. <clears throat> um, it is a farm in a farming area. It was a total of about 350 acres. Um, like all other businesses, um, standing still is really an option. Um, you either move with the times and make yourself 
uh, commercially competitive, and I'm sure that's what sits behind all this. I can see no clear or outstanding reason why we would object to it. None at all. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Johnson. Uh, if we any further speakers, please. Thanks to Polly James, Chairman. Thanks to Polly Andrews, and then Councillor James. Uh, thank you, Chairman. As has been said, this is oh oh just for Councillor Hewitt's benefit. I did take myself out to have a look at the site, quite just quietly, and uh, to see what it was like out there uh, on Sunday. Um, this is, as has been said, this is a farm in an agricultural area. They want to expand, make themselves commercially viable. This is a small extension to an existing build, farm building, and I can see no objection to it whatsoever. I'm happy to support this application. Thank you, Councillor Andrews. Uh, Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. I, I just find some difficulty with this, the objections to this, albeit within where I'm sitting at the moment, I've got three farms that have probably put up more buildings in the last two to three years than this particular development. Um, it, all sorts of rather tenuous uh, um, objections are made to this. I mean, these developments that have taken place within, within uh, um, my area have done so within the are in the Y Valley, uh, an area of considerable beauty in itself. You know, agriculture has to move on. This is a relatively small development in comparison with some of the ones we're having within within the county. As to the the danger of sycamore trees, I'm not quite sure. To horses, I've got horses now within the 50 yards of here, sort of. Um, underneath the sycamore trees so i don't quite understand what mm -hmm. that's about and i've always had <laughs> known horses being been living quite happily with sycamore trees so um so i'm i'm happy to support this particular proposal thank you councillor james councillor hunt Thanks. thank you chairman um councillor rones and other councillors comments re-farming activity in rural areas are in my view entirely appropriate. I support this type of activity in predominantly rural locations, subject of course to officers recommended conditions and I will be voting for this application. Thank you Councillor Hunt. Uh, Councillor Fagan. Thank you Chair. I, I just wondered if um, if it was agreed to um, uh, go forward with this recommendation, whether we could add uh, some calculation of the surface area of the roof, the accumulation of water from the roof, given um, the flooding issues on Scar Lane, um, if that could possibly be um, conditioned in, is that something that uh, we could put in as a condition? Uh, well, I'll ask for comments from uh, Mr. Jones shortly, but uh, having visited the site, I don't think that uh, the increased roof area on the site will actually have an effect on Scar Lane, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll wait for um, Mr. Jones's comments, please. Yeah, I, I mean, it's ordinarily we, we wouldn't look to sort of condition a full sort of surface to water drain strategy for um, for an agricultural building um, and as it, as it go back to it is relatively modest increase um, in the built coverage of the site um, um, I mean we've in terms of so trying to think about how we could we, we could sort of condition a surface water um, surface water drainage strategy if if members were if they considered that that was um, an option they'd, they'd want to look at um, but the, the problem of surface water is is a localized one and there's no um, sort of known um, flood risk at the site from from surface water um, but obviously you know um, we did have an incredibly wet winter where obviously there were there was surface water flowing through the site so um, a surface water drain strategy is is an option if that 
if that is what members um, would look towards. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Watson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr Jones, can I also ask about, um, is there a possibility of putting a waste management plan in place? Um, you know, what is happening to the, the site waste? Um, is that a possibility to put that as a condition as well? I mean, going back to um, obviously our, our comments from, from the planning ecologist, the, the size, the increased um, footprint of, this, of the cattle building isn't such which would um, which would usually warrant that and given that the cattle would be housed um, on straw during the winter it's not going to, it's not considered that that would create um, sort of a runoff in by way of slurry um, that, that would require such such a management plan um, to be to be imposed. Uh, what I will say is that uh, most farmers I think all farmers have to do a waste management plan but as normal practice anyway um, with regards to their single farm payment um, uh, conditions. So um, I don't think it's uh, wholly necessary for this application as an individual application. Uh, I've got no other speakers registered currently. Um, is there anybody else that wishes to speak before I call upon Mr. Bishop to make any comments before I go back to the ward councillor? I can't see anybody, so Mr. Bishop, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, very good debate um, covering uh, all, 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 all aspects, I would suggest, Chairman. Um, this is a, a modest um, addition to a, a, an existing uh, farm complex. As you've heard from the case officer, 22%, that is, uh, that is relatively modest. And I think the, the, the plans uh, clearly identify that as well. Uh, particularly the the plan which identified the uh, the grade area of the new of the new build, it, it was quite it, in relation to the the remainder of the of the site. Um, the key the key here, and it's been drawn out in in previous appeals, is the visual impact of the proposal, and it is contained within within the complex. There there is a, a modest addition to to the to the one side where a new landscape barrier is going to be inserted, which will provide an enhancement not only to the um, new build, but also to the existing buildings as well, with a, um, a new hedge and a, a new tree-lined hedge. In line with the landscape officer's comments, you'll see the professional officers within the, from your uh, services have raised no objections to the proposal subject to those amended plans. Um, you'll also see, I'm sure, that um, Dawson Parish Council have also supported the proposal. I note the letters, letters of objection and obviously the, the additional communication you would have received. And thank you for those members who forwarded those on to officers. Um, can I just remind members again that they should do that if they receive any, any items um, after a report is, is, uh, is completed uh, and published. Um, to the two issues relating to um, water and lighting, I would suggest, um, as uh, Mr. Jones has identified to you, that you could um, you could propose a, a water um, a surface water um, con condition, um, which um, that could uh, be a, a, attached to it for details to be submitted for approval, um, and secondly that you could also I I insert a uh, condition that no external lighting shall be proposed unless authorised by the authority. Um, uh, and I would suggest that those two are, 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 are included, but obviously that's up to the, the proposer, which I believe is Councillor Roan and Councillor Johnson, who seconded it. Thank you, Chairman. If I could just add to that, I, I think mention was mentioned about the, uh, the colour of the roofing material. And I yes, think the, that, that uh, needs to be part of the condition as well. Uh, that's already recommended, Chairman, on the, uh, on the conditions, okay. yes. Right, thank you. Right. Um, thank you, Mr. Bishop. I move uh, back across to uh, Councillor Hewitt to make her final comments before we go to a vote. Thank you. You'll need to unmute yourself, Councillor Hewitt. Um, yeah, I, I really do feel that not enough members have actually seen the site to assess the visual impact. <coughs> and um, the, the tree line down the side of the the development will not screen the farm from the hilltop opposite at all. 
um, it will simply do what um, the community have wanted it is not to have any further spread. And that's a good thing. I absolutely agree that it's a good thing to delimit the spread to the um, west of the farm, but it doesn't do any screening. And I, I thank Mr. Bishop for our offering a surface runoff um, calculation because I, I think that that needs to be addressed. And um, I do think, I, I, I'm at a loss to understand why one application which has one footprint is not assessed as that footprint and that it's delimited by the stated uses. And I, and I say that because as soon as a build is up, it can then be adapted as existing buildings are already being adapted to for other uses. And you know that's perfectly within the rights of the farmer to do that to adapt it to other uses, but it does mean that there is a cumulative effect of changing the use to add livestock to it. So um, I'm a little dismayed that the um, calculation for the area, the footprint area, cannot be addressed as one unit, um, because I think there will be an effect on water quality, and I think we as an administration need to be looking at that. But I, as I say, I thank Mr. Bishop for suggesting a calculation on runoff because I think that's very important. So um, yeah, I would urge for a deferral on visual impact grounds. And I would also just say that um, I don't really understand why it's not being taken as one footprint um, because that's what it is essentially. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Councillor Hewitt. Um, obviously we, we didn't have a motion uh, for deferral um, there was an opportunity but uh, that wasn't taken uh, the actual proposal on the table that we are going to go into a vote for is one for approval with the uh, suggested conditions i will uh, go to uh, mrs evans who will conduct a named vote thank you Thank you, Chair. For clarification, uh, Councillor Roan, obviously, as yes, you've moved the motion to approve, uh, can you confirm, are you happy with those two additional conditions that have been suggested by Mr Bishop? Yeah, I, I don't see any reason why not. I would uh, I would have been just as content for, the, to, for us to vote on as the, uh, with Office of Recommendation, because I think if they'd have been in there, they would have been part of it. But uh, and, I'm going to bow down to Kevin's great knowledge, and uh, we'll 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 have those two put in there. Let's, uh, this, the second, the Councillor Johnson's okay with it. Can we confirm uh, that Councillor Johnson is uh, content as well? Uh, yes, Chair, I'm content as well. I, I, I'm I'm glad that I'm rather confused about the water runoff. If it starts to rain around there, it will rain on that area, whether or not you've got a building on it. I fail to see how putting the building up will make any addition to the rainfall and flooding on that area. But uh, if that's what it needs to get this through, then I will support the amendment as has Councillor Rohn. Yeah, I don't think that there's um, any risk of increased rainfall over that specific area, but obviously it would increase the runoff speed. Um, so... <laughs> That, that, that would be the reasoning behind it. But uh, back across to uh, Mrs Evans, please, to take the name vote. Thank you very much, Chair. So for clarification, what you are looking at is a motion to grant permission, permission subject to the conditions as set out in the report and obviously the updated report and the two additional conditions that have been mooted and accepted by the mover, namely to a surface water management plan condition and a condition regarding the uh, no out external lighting unless proposed by the local planning authority. Um, on that basis, I will run through the list of names. Could you please confirm whether you are for, against or abstain the motion? Thank you. Councillor Graham Andrews. For. Councillor Paul Andrews. For. Councillor Polly Andrews. For. Councillor Fagan. Against. Councillor Foxton. For. Councillor Hardwick. For. Councillor Hunt. For. Councillor James. 
Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. <coughs> Councillor Milmore. Four. Councillor Milne. Against. Councillor Roan. Four. Councillor Selden. Four. Councillor Stone. Four. Councillor Watson. Four. Thank you. That motion to grant planning permission is moved by 13 votes to two. Thank you, Mrs. Evans. Uh, that concludes our business for the today. Um, could I, um, before I formally close the meeting, can I have confirmation that the live stream has been switched off, please? And that we're no longer broadcasting live or recording.